from things that have happened over the past few years that a few years of political turmoil or even one year or a few months can have a massive impact on populations of great apes. So the bonobo has gone from over 20,000 in the Congo to maybe less than 5,000 just over the past few years of the civil war. And that sort of disruption that you can't predict, it has a catastrophic impact on the local populations of bonobos or orangutans or any other large ape species. The orangutan um, is the is in Asia is the only Asian great ape um, found in Sumatra and Borneo, and um, in particular, that species um, is under significant amount of threat. There is uh, probably a sequence that could play out that would make the first great ape extinction that we'll see in in our lifetimes. The bushmeat trade is basically an, of international scale um, where you have the extraction of forest meat, um, species such as um, forest dikers or small deer, pigs, um, other mammals, rodents, and also primates is probably the biggest threat um, and a growing threat almost equal to that of habitat loss. The two are not mutually exclusive in that oftentimes uh, an operation to log a forest um, leads to the creation of roads and the establishment of logging camps. Um, now you've opened up access to the forest and also provided a transportation network out of the forest and oftentimes following these logging operations you have professional hunters um, moving in and using the infrastructure of the logging operation to move a higher volume of meat out of the forest. And apes, being very large, live in, need basically large areas of forest to survive. So if a orangutan disappears, then all the other animals and plants in that forest are also in danger of disappearing. It would be a tremendous loss, um, not only just in terms of general loss of biodiversity and the cascade effects of losing that type of organism in environment might have very um, dramatic and unforeseen ramifications for the ecosystem. So there could be an ecosystem um, collapse, at least locally. Also in terms of um, sort of global knowledge and, and, um, and scientific value, um, we have much to learn from ourselves. 
about ourselves from studying an organism like the orangutan, and those opportunities would be, would be lost. In terms of our understanding of humans, it's uh, impossible to work to say how important it would be. It's so important for us to understand humans and human evolution that if we remove our closest relatives, we have taken away our chance of understanding where we came from. I think all of us who work in zoos would say that there's room for improvement. So as, um, as, as we get better and better at what we do, and as, and as fast as we can afford to replace our old exhibits, we try to replace them with not only more naturalistic exhibits, but with exhibits that really serve the species-specific needs. Many of us who work with primates, sort of working in the country, when we come out, um, one of the things we really benefit from is talking to each other. So we find out ideas of what works in some areas and what doesn't work. So you can get, just for us, an immediate benefit of finding out what's going on in different countries and what's possible by talking to each other. So the sort of first level is, it's a network of primatologists who are active in conservation to talk to each other. Then we bring in all of the students that are interested and want to learn more and become involved. I founded the Northwest Primate Conservation Society in December of 2002 and each year we try to expand the program and build our agenda and our activities. There's definitely an increased focus on the great apes and this is hotly debated um, among primatologists. Some people would think that this um, intense focus on the great apes is justified and that we should be pouring much of our effort and conservation dollars into making sure that we don't lose a great ape species. Um, other primatologists would argue that all species of primates um, are potentially um, valuable and should be given equal conservation focus. The Northwest Primate Conservation Society is a group of experts, of primatologists who are involved in field studies. It goes from Northern California up to British Columbia, so it goes right the way across the Pacific Northwest. And it's a really good network, of a way of exchanging information and uh, talking about the sorts of things that are going on and spreading news about what's happening, the good and the bad. There are some reports of ape species or subspecies that may have existed but have now gone extinct, but people don't really know because there are small populations in remote areas. So we're still discovering species, so they could be going extinct before we even know. And that's been true of many primates, and some of them we may never know that they've actually gone extinct. It's really uh, a sad and kind of horrifying thing to think of that, that um, within my children's lives, uh, many of the ape species that I've sort of taken for granted uh, all of my life could be gone. And I think that the world would be a much poorer place for the loss of a single species and especially a primate species that's so so like us and can really, we can still learn so much from these animals and learn so much about these animals. Minority of people living at a very high standard of living are causing a disproportionate amount of damage um, and using a higher amount of resources than the majority of people living at a lower consumption level. So changing the status quo, which is benefiting the few relatively will be a very difficult challenge but one that has to be undertaken.